Joining me on Coaster Conversations today is none other than Merlin CEO, Scott O'Neill, who's taken the time out of his very busy schedule to speak to me today. Thanks for joining me, Scott. And how are you today, sir? It's wonderful to be here. I'm thrilled to be with you on your podcast. And uh, the only place I'd rather be is on a coaster. <laughs> I like it. I like Which coaster in particular, though? That's the question. Okay, my last my last ride, I was just at Thorpe Park last weekend. Yeah. Um, and I, I loved Saw. I loved it. I loved how, every how, How's your neck? How's your neck? Because everyone could play. I, I did a couple. Yeah. Of, I did that twice. <laughs> yeah, twice I did it. I love that, it. That one, that one dip, I don't know if you've been on it, but that, that yeah. one where you, you literally go go backwards and down, that, that's, a, that's a rush. We did a so. VIP tour of that not long ago, like where you go behind the scenes and have a look around the ride. It's just like the attention to detail. And like, obviously, if you're a fan of the movies as well, there's always that nostalgia, especially with rides like that. So it's definitely my favorite at the park as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I liked it. I I I I, I did love I loved my time at Thor. I like said we're we're very fortunate, as you know. I mean, we we sit in a business where we have um some of the great rides in the world and um and I get to ride them. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice life, isn't it? It it beats a stick in the eye, as they say. <laughs> so before we dive into all things Merlin, could you tell me how you got started in the world of business and how the senior vice president of the team marketing and business operations role within the MBA came to fruition? Absolutely. Well, I, I started in business as an assistant, marketing assistant. Um, I worked for a, a wonderful man named Arnie Previs, who was at Forbes, and then went over to the Nets in the sports business. And he needed uh, an assistant to help him do what assistants do, which is effectively whatever he wanted. So I took dictation. I sent out letters. I picked him up lunch. I, I picked up his dry cleaning. I did anything I, that, that an assistant would possibly do. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with the business. And there's so many similarities between the, the sports business and the amusement park business. Um, and, and, and the one similarity that I fell in love with is, is this, this notion that um, there is an activity, in that, in that case, basketball, and in this case, um, theme parks, that bring people together. And, and they bring this notion. If there's one thing we learned during our wonderful time and uh, during COVID was that we need each other. We need experiences, you know? I, I think the economy has shifted from things to experiences. And, and that's one thing I learned at a very, very young age. So that's how I got my start. And at the NBA, um, I, I, uh, I was working for the Philadelphia Eagles, the football club. Um, I had taken a, a short stint at the Harvard Business School to get my MBA and went back to the Eagles. And then started a, um, a, a company called HoopsTV.com, which was a basketball lifestyle website. And, um, and that crashed and burned. And um, I was out of work, out of luck and out of money and um, got hired by David Stern, the former commissioner of the NBA, um, on the advice of Adam Silver, the current commissioner of the NBA, to go work and eventually run a group that build best practices across the NBA, WNBA and G League teams. And so it was my group that were effectively consultants for the league. So if you like to learn, it was an incredible experience. And, and so it clearly relates to to working at an organization as vast as Merlin in 24 countries with 141 attractions and thinking about what are best practices, what's really working, what food is selling where and why, can we transfer it or, or does a specific land have such an impact that we can take some element of it and move it from Legoland Windsor to Alton Towers or not? You know, it's, it's amazing, amazing education I got along the way. I've been very fortunate. It's definitely a dynamic landscape with obviously both positions that you're in now, but how did the transition from sports to theme parks come about? Because that seems like two almost as though the, the similar in ways, but very different in others. Yeah. I mean, after COVID, I, I stepped down from my post of running the Philadelphia 76ers and New Jersey Devils. I mean, a whole bunch of other uh, businesses. And um, I, 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 you know, I lost the, the joy. It sounds sad to say now, almost hard for me to say. But I did lose the joy, and I, I spent quite a bit of time doing a lot of things that I always wanted to do in life. I wrote a book, published a book called Be Where Your Feet Are. I coached my daughter's high school basketball team. We actually won a state championship, go team. Nice. Um, I did a lot of uh, speaking and thinking and think tanking and uh, investing in companies and being on boards and learning again, just like, like refreshing my mind, uh, which is what I like to do. And, um, and then I was ready to go run something and I kind of raised my hand and, and, uh, and lo and behold, I had a few people that reached out. And um, when I heard about Merlin, I felt it was, um, as I feel now, which I think is quite possibly the greatest job in the world. 
Yeah, I mean, after speaking briefly at the World of Jumanji event, and obviously we managed to have a, a ride on Mandrel Mayhem together, it was clear to see that your passion and enthusiasm for, for the, all these new experiences. I mean, what has the first few months been like traveling to various Merlin attractions all over the globe? Well, good news. Uh, 10 months in, I've been to 96 attractions. Wow. And so I've traveled to from Japan, Korea, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, to throughout Europe, the US, UK. I mean, it's been amazing. And what's 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 really sticks with me is, is is a few things. One is Merlin is different. It is a special place to work. And it is like that because the people are different and special. And there's there's some notion that we wake up every morning um, with the business of making memories and spreading joy and bringing happiness. And and that's what makes us different. And, and the good news is for me is coming in as CEO is that's in place. You know, I, there's nothing I have to drive. You know, in many cases, I have to get out of the way. Um, I do have a passion for growth. You know, I want to, you know, create more memories in, in more places to more people than anyone else in the world. So, so that's a, a very high aspiration. So we're going to have to grow. We also have to spend some time thinking about some of our, um, our parks, particularly in the UK, that are a bit older and might need a little bit of a, a refresh and a new ride here or there or, um, you know, a, a new, some new theming, new look and feel. And, and fortunately, uh, Fiona Eastwood, who, who runs that group, and Mike Ballas, who oversees the theme parks and all the incredible GMs we have and, and, and DDs we have in, in these theme parks, we're in really good hands. I mean, all the countries that you just reeled off there, how, how's the jet lag, first and foremost? You know, look, I have plenty of holes in my game for sure, but I, I surprisingly, I, I don't get jet lag. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of a crazy scenario, yeah. So I actually wake up, you know, I had this, this, I'm, I'm high hardcore extrovert, which, which you know, may surprise you or may not. <laughs> and, um, and I, I wake up and, and, and when I walk into an attraction, I'm immediately lifted. Yeah. Um, and then I crash, like I, 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 I sleep, you know, so it's, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm indif indefatigable. I, I, I walk, you know, as you, you know, and I've been on stretches where I've had several, um red eyes in a row and, and, and wake up and they're like are you tired i'm like tired no let's go you know so i i i feel like a kid in a candy store i feel like when you walk into one of our our uh, resorts or our attractions um i don't think there's anything quite like it it's a thrill yeah absolutely now i, I with all the traveling you take away all the traveling and you just get back to the office a nice normal day what are you overseeing as a CEO of a company? How do you manage your time? And most importantly, which department are you telling off first? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm more being told than tell. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely been in, in listening and learn mode quite a bit. I'm very fortunate to have such a talented management team here. When, when you're the CEO, the, the, the best thing you can do is, is to just make sure you have priorities in place. And, and, First and foremost, I want to make sure that, that this is the greatest place to work and visit in the world, bar none, period, end of sentence. And so I spend a lot of time on people and culture. Um, and, and some things I do really well and some things I don't do so quite so well. Um, I spend a lot of time on, on how we can improve the guest experience, whether that's the food and beverage you eat, um, pricing, the entrance, the theming, the rides coming in. Um, I spend quite a bit of time on growth too. It's like, how, what, what are we going to build? What are we going to buy? Why, where, when, how, um, where is their land available? What, what countries open, uh, offer the best opportunity? Are there companies we should go acquire and why, you know, what attractions should we be in? What brands are really interesting and coming up? And, and so I spend, spend quite a bit of time on that. And then, and then generally it's, it's trying to make sure that the incredible executives I work with, whether that's, you know, Paul Morton, uh, who runs our MMM, our Merlin Magic Makers, or Fiona Eastwood, who runs as a chief operating officer of Resort Theme Parks in Midway, or John Jacobson, who runs our uh, incredible Legoland Resorts, um, or Spencer Hall, who runs our, our people and experience, or any, any of the amazing executives here. It's like, do they have the right resources? You know, are we aligned in terms of our priorities? Um, do, have, are they creating the right culture where people can be empowered and challenged and be successful? That's, the, that's where I spend some time. I can imagine the first day on the job was quite daunting, obviously, with being spearheading such a, a giant portfolio that is Merlin Entertainments. Were there certain areas of the company that you wanted to tackle immediately the second you got the role? I mean, the first thing I wanted to do was was ask more questions than I than I spoke, um, listen more yep. um, than I than I talked, and and figure out um, directionally 
um, how we're, we should go forward as a, as a group. And, and again, it's, it's not like, you know, I was talking to a, a, a guy in China, we're doing, we're busy building three big Legoland resorts in, in Shanghai and Sichuan and, and um, Shenzhen. And he was asking me about, well, it's difficult. And I was like, well, we've been in China for 18 years. He was like, this, this is not a, it's just not a nascent company. And so what's nice about coming into a company this, this wonderfully built um, by Nick Varney and his team and having a management team that's so experienced and so talented is, is you have the freedom to come in and, and ask a lot of questions and listen and learn and travel and get to be on the ground with, with people, you know, to understand who your colleagues are and what their challenges are and, and what, what we need to be doing differently and, and how we can better engage our guests and how do we keep the guests at the center. And, you know, all that fun, that, that fun stuff. Um, I'm very, very blessed to come to a company that's, that's just incredible. Fantastic. And with many of Nick Varney's projects that are still in the works, uh, this season has certainly found like a, it's felt like a transitional period. It's kind of still in full flow with UK, some UK parks handling it well and some just kind of playing catch up, in my opinion. But when those final sign offs are completed, like how do you feel you will personally change the, the Merlin landscape and what are your main focus points specifically when it comes to the UK theme park market? Oh boy, that's a loaded question. Um, you know, I, I, I would say like, I have a very team centric approach. Um, and so you'll, you'll keep hearing me come back to the same themes, which might not give you the answers you, you want, desire or love, but, but I will tell you, you know, when you have, you know, Paul Morton has been in this business a long time, you know, Mike Vallis, I think he grew up in this business, you know? And so you're, you're, you're Neil runs, runs Thorpe or Ramesh, who runs, uh, Jesse around where I am today. Um, Bianca has been in the theme park business for 20 some odd years, even though, so, so, you know, you have really, really, really talented operators. Um, so, I, so the, the push is, it's not as much like where I want to leave my stamp as is, is okay. We have a, a collection of some of the most incredible operators and marketers in the history of this business. Um, in, in what format can we engage them, um, create an environment where they can then create and how do we prioritize to make sure that every park you go to, you understand this is a Merlin experience, you know? And, and, and yes, we have a dominant position in the UK for sure. Um, but you go to Gardaland in Italy, you know, and that is, that's the Alton Towers of Italy, if you will. And that's an incredible experience. You go to Hyde Park in Germany, that's a wonderful experience. And then, you know, our officer are 10 Legolands around the world. It's uh, we do this right. Um, we, I, I think we have a good sense of, of what is happening. Um, I, I do, it, it, you know, some of the things we're talking about are, you know, can we be a little less reliant on, on rides and can we be more engaged in terms of entertainment? Um, what, what might that look like and feel like? Um, how do we entertain and make sure all families are, are welcome and comfortable? Um, can we, can we be seriously like a, a park like Alton where you, you come in there and you know exactly what you're getting for sure. And that just doesn't mean the incredible rides there and we have them. Um, but there's also CBBS is there, you know, the CBBS hotel, which is wonderful, you know? So, so we're trying to find that, that right balance. I think where we, we understand who we are in the proposition and we make sure we deliver against it. Is it quite hard to um, focus on the UK market because for, for Merlin is constantly progressing a, as a company, but uh, in terms of boundaries of uh, attractions and experiences, the only major competition in the UK market really is yourself. So how do you go about doing that when the competition is, like I just said, yourself? Well, this is our home, you know, I, I, I live here, the team lives here. Um, and so uh, th there's nothing quite um, more amazing than, you know, being in your backyard, my, my daughter, uh, I moved her over, my, my youngest of four moved over, and um, and she said to me today, this morning, as she's hopping on the bus for school, she's like, uh, can we go to Thorpe on Friday with some friends? And I was like, heck yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? Um, and then this weekend, um, my, my wife's flying back to the U.S. for this weekend, my daughter's like, we going to Alton, or are we hitting Chessie or Legoland Windsor? I mean, think about how fun that is, you know, it's just, um, so I, so I will tell you, like, I'm, I'm a consumer, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a guest. I, I, I take it in, you know, I, I ride the rides, I wait on cues, I, I eat the food um, and I want to take in the experience. I actually want to feel it. I mean, today I'm in Chessington um, and I'm going to, I'm going to work 
I'm going to work the front lines. I'm going to put on the front line outfit and go work in the park. On Friday morning, I'm going to do the same with Jesse before I go grab my daughter and her friends and bring her back. Then I'm just going to be dressed like a dad. Um, but, I, but I think there is something to actually understanding what this experience is like. You know, what's it like to wait on a queue? I, what's it like? What does it feel like? Not from my, from my corner office, you know? It's beautiful up there. It overlooks the eye. They got the Thames. It's gorgeous, you know? But not from there, but actually in line in the heat or in the rain. Um, and, and what's it like to work? So, so th- those are the types of things that I'm, I'm most comfortable with. Do you feel as though that personal approach is kind of helping to drive Merlin forward as a company? Because there are not many CEOs that I can think of that get down and dirty, like will stand in a queue. Normally it'll be a suit straight to the front, fast yeah, track, yeah. limited for life. Do you feel right. like that's one of the core values that you brought to the table when, when you uh, took over the role? Yeah, I just want to be really careful. Like this is an amazing company. It, it was before me and will be after me. And, and I'm, I'm a steward while I'm here. That's how I think about running a company is like, I, I'm, I'm here to, to take the great foundation that was built and leave it better than I found it. And so is it different? I, I, you know, I, I know Nick, we talk, you know, and, and um, but I, I wasn't here. I never worked with him. I never worked for him and he never worked for me. So I, you know, so I, I only know what I know. And, and the one thing I do know is that the guest has to be at the center of everything we do. It has to be at the center of everything we think. And, and we have to be close to it. We have to feel it. We have to touch it. We have to experience it. We have to be humble and open to feedback. We have to accept to listen. You know, I, I will tell you, like, you know, when, when, when and if complaint letters come in, I read them, all of them. They come to my email box. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really amazing, you know? And so I want to know what we're feeling and seeing. And, um, and, and we're not perfect. And that's okay. Like, we're on the journey to perfect. We yeah. always will be but when it comes to the million attractions for you that you've seen so far across the world, is the one in particular that's setting the benchmark for something that you'd hope to kind of replicate across the portfolio? Oh man, that's such a good question. And I probably can't answer other than to say like, there are pieces that you'd love to, if you took pieces of every park and put it together, I imagine you'd create the perfect, perfect attraction. But, um, you know, I just have like, I'm just, I have no idea. Maybe I'm hungry. I just keep thinking about the pizza I had at Gardenland and it's just like, I can't get it out of my mind right now. I'm starving. Yeah. Um, or, you know, when Thorpe, I mean, when you're going through 10 up, you know, uh, 10 revolutions in a row, um, you know, if that doesn't get the heart pumping, I don't know what does. I mean, there's something about all manner and, uh, being scared out of your mind, um, which makes me, makes me, uh, I guess, sadistically happy. You know, I, I think there's, there's all this, you know, there's all these amazing pieces and experiences, um, uh, Jumanji Land, we, we talked about when we we're here. I just, uh, I mean, it's something about that BM coaster that just makes you feel like you're you're just gliding through the air. It's special. And so I, I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like it, it's an almost impossible question to answer. Okay. Uh, well, well, in terms, of, let me kind of reword the previous one. Then. So seeing obviously new Merlin investments improving considerably over the last few months with seemingly additional budgets being added and assigned to older signed off projects. Is that a case of um, like your kind of American mentality of bigger and better with every passing project? <laughs> or is it simply just more budget being added to these uh, important areas such as theming? Yeah, well, I, I will tell you that, um, that they're, they're, I'm definitely American. And I definitely have an American approach. And, and I, I've definitely been reminded of that since I've been here by a few people, uh, dear friends of mine, who give me the honest truth. Um, and and I, I do think, I'll answer your question directly in a second, but I, but I, I do think there's a notion to, to bigger and better. And, 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 the, and, and the people of Merlin want bigger and better. And you know what that creates for people who work here is opportunity, right? So as we keep growing, it gives opportunity for people to kind of lift up and get up. Um, and I, I do like, I, I do, I mean, look, I do want to grow and I want to grow faster, okay? And I do want new rides and I want them faster. And I, and I do want new theming and I want it faster. So that's a yes. But, but this is not like pushing a rock up a hill. I mean, this is like, you know, more like hopping on the capes of the incredible people that are here. So, I, you know, my, my job is, is, is simply to set the direction, make sure we have the right talent and enable them to put on a world-class show for, for our guests. So... If you're feeling that, good. Thank you. That's this is working. Our our, our team is, is operating, but but I, you know what I see. Um, in many, in many ways, I, I'll tell you this, this example. I was I was struggling with something um, as a teenager, and my, my father put down this white sheet of paper, and he and he put a dot in the middle. You know, and he's like, "What do you see?" Now I was I, I was a bit of a, a hard kid to raise. I was a lot, I was in a lot of trouble, 
And he's like, what do you see? And I was like, dad, I don't want to do this. And I was like, I want you to sit down, sit down. I was like, okay, sit down. What do you see? He's like, well, I see a dot. Are you done? He's like, no, that's my point. You're missing the whole paper. And so, so I, I guess as a, as a CEO, you know, one who's, who's uh, this isn't my first rodeo, as they say out West in the U S you know, I, I've kind of seen this movie before, you know, and, 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 and I know how it ends and it's spectacular, you know? And so, and by that, I mean, it's like, there are some new, there's some themings, some new rides and some new action going on and we're, we're doing everything we can, but man, there's, there's a whole slate of white paper open there that I want everyone to see and smile. And, and some of that stuff in a business like this, that takes three, four, five, ten 10 years to, to build and create, this, this will be the envy of all. I mean, this, this is a, a spectacular base of a company that's going to get even better. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. And with Merlin, obviously seeing new partnership deals with IP, such as Sony, the deal for Gordon, Chesterton's Jumanji area, uh, are recognizable IPs the future of Merlin attractions or will there be some a nice blend of original ideas too? Oh, such a great idea. Such a great thought and question. Um, uh, we, we, are, we are meeting with IP rights holders uh, quite frequently. And, and if, if you were industrious, you could, you could Google the top brands ready for theme parks and you can better, better get that uh, guests that we were on the phones with, with their CEOs or, or whoever's doing the deals. Um, Jonathan Lewis is our guy who does our deals. He's spectacular. does a really nice job. Paul Morton directs him and, um, <coughs> and, I, and he runs our MMM, who I mentioned before. And so I think you'll see a lot, a, a, a lot of big IP deals coming down the pike. They take time, yeah. uh, but we're on the pace. Um, but, but, but there's something, you know, when you go to Wicker Man, okay, or Nemesis, or there's something pretty special about some of this IP we create. And, um, and there's a pretty big um, company which you may have heard of who has taken some of their IP, like Haunted House and um, Pirates of the Caribbean and made movies out of them, you know? And so I wonder, like, with all these incredible brands we have, you know, should we be dipping into the content space at all? Would that make sense? Yeah. Um, and that's not a, that's not a today thing or a tomorrow thing, but, but I, I just, I love the creativity. I love the brands. I love our IP. I think we have a unlimited, unlimited opportunity to do something really special. Fantastic. And obviously with a constant workflow day in, day in and day out as the life of a CEO, do you get like any time to relax? What, and what really chills you out when you're away from the office? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, first off, this, this is my hobby. You know, my, my wife has known that about me. Like I, I love what I do. I love doing it. Yeah. Um, um, and, and, and that's some of the, you know, I have, I have dear friends of mine who, who work to live and then, you know, their day starts at five o'clock or six o'clock or whatever the day ends. <clears throat> For me, I pop out of the bed thinking about this. Like, I, I, I love this. That being said, I have a wonderful family. I mentioned I've been married for 27 years. Um, so my wife and I have a lot of fun together. Um, I mentioned my four daughters three in the US um, in school and one working at the NBA. And, um, and then I have a daughter here in school. So I, I spent a lot of time with my ladies, uh, which is great. And then anytime I get a chance to play just about any sport, I will play it. So um, basketball is my true love and passion, but uh, I played football as a, as a kid. Um, um, European football, that is not American football. <laughs> yeah. That's so I uh, um, played a little tennis growing up as well, baseball. I, I, anything you pick up with a racket, a ball, a bat, um I'd, I'd be i'd be signing up for it uh, it'd be good to meet up and have a game of football one time i think then scott i think that's on the that's card good. <laughs> you know, the, the, leg, the, the legs are gone but the mouth still goes that's all that's, I can that's, that's, that's all you need that's all you need so for everyone <laughs> out there watching this interview what final words if any would you like to give to them come visit a merlin attraction today um we love you we appreciate you we want your feedback um, but, but most importantly, come and make connection. If there's one thing we learn is we need each other. We need time together. Go make memories, go take selfies, go have fun, smile and escape because, uh, there's nothing quite like that. Scott, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me and taking a chance on my little old channel. I wanted to be a part of it. I absolutely cannot wait for a million future with you at the helm. All the very best to you. And thanks for coming on Coast to Conversations. Hey, thanks so much. Continue success and, and, and good luck with your, your attraction yourself.